Hello and welcome to Efficient Strategy Gaming. Today I'd like to review some testing that I've done with Army Experience in Hearts of Iron 4. I'll also touch a little bit on some Air Experience tests that I've conducted as well. So let's get into it. Uh, so basically what I've been doing is donating weapons through Lendlease to different countries around the map. Uh, you have three kind of side wars that happen before World War II starts, and I'm playing as Germany right now. This is just vanilla. You have the Ethiopian War, which has already taken place. You have the Spanish War, and then you have the Japanese-Chinese War over here. So you can lend lease guns to all those different nations that are involved in those wars and you can net some xp so the war in spain has been going on for about a year right now and what i did i did something a little different this time i donated weapons 7000k guns 7000k 7000 guns to uh, nationalist Spain to Spain and then when the anarchists popped up I gave them seven seven k guns as well and after a year I ended up with 22 army experience so that's 21,000 guns for 22 uh, army experience to contrast this with some of the other ways that you can gain experience um, I could give 10k guns to just nationalist Spain. And after a year, that would give me about eight XP total. So that's a little less than half the amount of weapons or a lot less, less than half uh, the XP. I could send an attache to Spain for 100 political power and 50 command power. And that would net me over a year around 28. So actually, you could get 28 experience by sending that attache. Or I could just get a expert. So let's say von Runstead here, 0 0.09 XP daily. That turns into about 32 XP yearly. Or I could take Rommel. Um, and he is a genius. And he would net me 43.2 XP yearly. So as you go up, the best way of getting XP is Rommel. The second best way is to get an expert in your officer corps. The third best way of getting XP was send attache to wherever you want to send them to. And the fourth and final way of getting army XP uh, was to lend lease guns. So you netted the least amount of XP by uh, lend leasing guns to the different nations. This raises a lot of questions. And for Germany, what you want to do is you want to go war economy. So you need more than 50% war support. And you can get there a couple ways in vanilla. You can send volunteers to the Spanish Civil War. Uh, you can also get Joseph Goebbels, which gives you 10% war support. But typically, you need to send an attache to the Spanish Civil War to get 10% war support. Actually, yeah, 10% war support right there. And um, you'll get the war support and you'll get the army XP. Um, and then that will get you up to 50% war support through those different methods. And then you can go war economy. So there's obviously a lot of different ways that you can get up to the 50% war support to set, to get into war economy. Um, what I would like to propose today is I'm just off the cuff. Um, proposing a way of of the best way that i know of right now obviously there will be better ways of getting army xp um it would be a blend between um all the methods that i just described so let's let's digress here for a bit okay so i tried all different ways of sending 
equipment to Italy and all the different ways that I sent equipment to Italy during the Ethiopian war, I netted zero XP. So you can just throw that in the garbage. Sending equipment to Italy during the Ethiopian war does not work. However, you might be able to send guns to the Ethiopian uh, side and net XP that way. And that actually happened IRL. Ethiopia did receive, I believe, the old school Mausers. I don't believe they did send the, um, let's see here. You have to go outdated equipment. The Gewehr 98 to Ethiopia, I believe either before or during the Ethiopian war. So that was a thing IRL. Um, another idea would be to produce the cheaper weapon and lend lease that weapon. But that doesn't make sense because as soon as you start producing this weapon, you lose all production efficiency. So it would be more efficient to put mills on whatever weapon you're going to lend lease uh, from the start of the, the game the car carabiner 98k because you have full production efficiency from the get-go with this gun so that would be the preferred gun to produce but sending it to italy during the ethiopian war obviously isn't going to work i still need to test how many guns to send the ethiopians i would assume just if you sent like 5k guns you probably get like probably five to eight xp which would be worth it um, obviously sending volunteers to Ethiopia, you could get around three or four XP in my testing. Um, but that's all the XP you're going to get from that war. And it's not really tenable to send an attache, uh, to Ethiopia during that war. So let's, let's go to the Spanish civil war. Well, the Spanish civil war, um, you know, if I send 10 K guns to just, nationalist spain i'll get around 8 xp and sending 21k guns to all the different factions netted me 22 xp so i would assume i could probably send around 5k to spain and 5k to nationalist spain and that would probably give me around 10 to 15 xp and that would probably be better because that's about half as many guns i usually spend send 10k guns to the spanish civil war so that would be good um and i think that the best way to gain xp and to also get into war economy would be to send the attache down to spanish civil war even though it nets you less xp than getting a expert or a genius you still get uh, the the ability to transition into war economy to snowball your economy as Germany. So I do think that that's still important. Your civ count as Germany is still important. Whether you're playing single player or multiplayer, you still need that civ ramp if you're playing historically. So I still think that it's good to send the attache to nationalist Spain and it would probably be good to send like 5k guns to nationalist Spain and Spain. You can play around with that, but I think that that's going to be the meth best method at this time. The reason why I would split the guns between the two respective countries is that you do push pretty hard when you send your volunteers down uh, in the Spanish Civil War. So giving some guns to Spain would be preferable so that the war lasts a little bit longer. And I'm going to say that that is the best way of gaining XP up to the Spanish Civil War point. Now, let's go further. If I send an attache to Japan, that was old meta stuff for multiplayer. I don't think that that is viable anymore because you will get more XP by simply getting an expert, spending the 100 political power to get an expert rather than sending an attache to Japan. So don't send an attache to Japan anymore. However, it would be good to send some weapons to China and to Japan to make that war last a little longer. In multiplayer, the Japan player might be upset at you if you send 
uh, guns to China. I'm not sure how the war in China goes nowadays in multiplayer um, because I still need to play more multiplayer games, but it would probably be preferable in single player to send some guns to China. I would think that. I did try sending my light tanks to Japan, got zero XP. I also sent my light tanks to Italy during Ethiopia my, and zero XP. I sent my light tanks to Nationalist Spain, zero XP. I also tried sending uh, all of my artillery equipment to Spain, to Nationalist Spain, and I got zero XP. So I would assume that the same thing would happen if I sent all my... Um, artillery or even guns to japan because they have a pretty healthy economy i would assume that i would get zero xp however if i send guns to china maybe just like 5k i would say you'd probably net xp i have to test that and if you're a newer player what i'm talking about here is simply uh starting lend lease and sending like 10k guns once to China and they will accept. So to summarize, um, the new meta is to send uh, guns to multiple countries, probably less guns divided over more countries will net you more XP. Sending an attache to their respective countries will net you a moderate amount of XP, but even better is to get in your officer core an expert. And then even better than that would be to get a genius. And that's basically all the different ways of getting XP before World War II starts as Germany that I can think of right now. And... Um, yeah, you can get it in the you can get various amounts of XP in the ways that I mentioned. I'm going to continue testing and get uh, a more formal video out on the topic when the meta is sussed out a little more. Uh, playing multiplayer is probably the best way of of getting a sense of the meta because you talk to a lot of different players when you play multiplayer in historical games and they've done their own testing and you can compare notes and then you obviously see what happens during games like how did germany get so much xp well then ask the german player what they did and and uh you can get a better idea of the meta that way so please subscribe to my channel for more hearts of iron 4 guides um experience is one of the biggest ways of um, boosting your country in the game now since you can get doctrine by spending army experience. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one.